today I will talk about the first three gates of Tiferet. Now, the first gate is the path of Saturn from Kether directly down to Tiferet. This is the path of Beth. Now, Beth in Hebrew is a very important letter. It is the first letter in the Torah. So, philosophically, the whole Torah is included in the letter Beth. Beth means house. So, it's always inferring that whatever follows it is contained within the Beth. Okay? Contained within. Now, <clears throat> Beth <clears throat> is the letter to which initiation into Hermetics is attributed. It would be the magician in Tarot. <clears throat> That's the letter Beth. Now, obviously, Beth is the direct connection between the I and the solitary self, the individualized awareness. So, <clears throat> but this also Aside from just the individual experience and importance of this path, this gate is also universal. All the gates from here on out have both a universal application and a personal application. An application to you as an individual being. Okay? So... <clears throat> We will actually practice each of these gates in two ways. We will experience them, experience them from the universal perspective and then from the personal perspective. So, the universal perspective of this gate is we start in Kether, in the eye, deeply embedded in the eye. And we look down and we see Tiferet below us, and we descend into Tiferet via this path of Saturn. Now Saturn from this angle, from this direction, is an infinite multiplication of the eye. Suddenly the eye becomes in Tiferet an infinite number of little reflections of itself. The complete whole body of the eye, that infinite eye, is expressed in Tiferet through this descent of Saturn. It opens up into an infinite expression. It is an infinitely large realm in which every part of the eye finds expression as solitary selves, an infinite number of solitary selves. So in that transition, you experience that explosive multiplication of self. And it's, it's very much an explosion of light. You are exploding into a million, or, you know, into an infinite number of suns, of stars. And all of them are you. All of them are I. That is the experience. And what you learn from that descent is how the I becomes the infinite universe. Because everything in the cosmos has a sentient self. Everything in the cosmos has a sentient self. So this is the explosion of the I into that infinite number of uh, individualized sentient selves. And it's a shift from the unmanifest I, the infinite 
I, the infinite simplicity of the I, to the infinite complexity of itself. This is the I, self-realizing, remember? Okay. So this is what you understand from this passage. How this transpires and what it means. And then we travel back up the path of Saturn. And this is an ult the ultimate simplification. This infinite number of sentient cells becomes one awareness, one thing. It is a compression, a Saturnian, a Saturnine sort of compression of consciousness into a single thing okay so it's an infinite expansion then an infinite compression okay. so that's the universal I the universal Tiferet okay but Tiferet is also an individual thing you have an individual unique experience manifestation of Tiferet. You are this infinitely unique manifestation of the I in Tiferet. So, to experience this path from the individualized perspective, we start again in Kether, the infinite I, and we descend through this path of Saturn we condense awareness into just a single little point among an infinite ocean of other single finite points. Infinite number of other points surround us. But we are a singular little expression of the I. And through this descent, you learn what that means. You learn the way that the I is expressed in the core of your being, through the core of your being, through your self. You understand that you <laughs> are the I. That the I fills you. That the I experiences itself through you. Through you and all these infinite others. Okay? And then you return up that path of Saturn to the infinite simplicity of the I. It is an infinite expansion of awareness, of your awareness, into that of the infinite I awareness. So, we come down from Kether into that small little expression of the I and then we expand again into that infinite expression of the I. <clears throat> okay, that is the first gate, the universal perspective and the individualized perspective. <clears throat> now, the second gate comes from Chokmah to Tiferet, via the path of Zayin, which is Gemini. Okay. Now, Gemini <clears throat> is the two sides of the same coin, the twins, the two faces pointing in opposite directions. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> from the universal perspective, this is the whole body of essential meaning 
descending into Tiferet and manifesting, expressing itself through that infinite number of solitary selves. Each solitary self in Tiferet expresses a portion of that great body, that infinite body of essential meaning. So, the universal factor is all of that essential meaning descending into Tiferet and expressing itself. It is the, the fire in each one of those infinite number of suns is that essential meaning, which is nothing other than the awareness of the eye experiencing itself through Tiferet, through all those solitary selves. Okay? So the universal experience of this gate, we rise to Chokmah, that realm of infinite essential meaning where the eye is, the eye is existing, is having existence, is experiencing existence, descends into this realm, this infinite realm of uh, solitary selves, and finds expression in each of those solitary selves. So, the whole body of essential meaning finds expression in Tiferet. And then we return. We come from this experience of all of these solitary selves expressing their essential meanings return to just the realm of pure essential meaning that is undifferentiated. Undifferentiated essential meaning. From, undifferenti from differentiated essential meaning to undifferentiated essential meaning. So it is, it is a return to source, an ever-inclusive return to source. Okay? Descent into differentiation and then the return into an undifferentiated state. So that's the universal expression, experience. Now for the individualized experience, we start in Chokmah, in this infinite sea of essential meaning, and then we descend to Tiferet through this path of Zain, and it's just our own bits of essential meaning that are descending into Tiferet and our solitary self. So we are a portion of that great infinite ocean of essential meaning and in, in Tiferet we have solidified our awareness, our portion of the I. And it has the shape, it has the, the color, the texture of just our specific quantity of essential meaning. Now, in that experience, we recognize that there are an infinite number of different expressions of essential meaning. So there is I, self, and other, that is the initial experience of Tiferet for the solitary self is self and other. So we come to identify our self as a specific combination of essential meanings and we begin to define other as other aspects of that infinite ocean of essential meaning. Okay? So that is the descent 
in the Tiferet from Hakma at the personal level and the ascent we are <clears throat> expanding expanding our awareness to include other as we reach up to Hakma and in Hakma we are that infinite ocean of essential meaning. We are all of self, all of essential meaning, seeking to express itself in Hakma. So in that descent, we differentiate into just our own essential meaning amidst this ocean of other essential meanings and in the rise we expand ourself so that we're not just this differentiated bit we are the whole okay. now what you learn from this transition this from this personalized transition from Hokma to Tiferet and back is <clears throat> the nature, how the, uh, how we as individual solitary selves are composed of essential meaning. What is the nature of our own essential meaning? The uh, content of our sentient, of our solitary self. This is what we understand. And we also understand that process of the formation of the individual self and its unique combination of essential meanings. So, that is the second gate of Tiferet. Now, <clears throat> that path of Zayin has enabled a triangular gate. Zayin, Beth, He. Okay? So we have this triangle of Tiferet. So, <clears throat> now, this also has a universal experience and an individual experience. And we will look at both. The universal experience starts with this last path that we just crossed. We just uh, uh, a journey across. The Hakma to Tiferet. We start in Hakma, the infinite expanse of undifferentiated essential meaning. We come down to Tiferet by the path of Zayin, Gemini, and we see the infinite expanse of undifferentiated essential meaning is now differentiated into little quantities, each of which is unique, different <clears throat> bits, reflections of expressions of that great body of essential meaning. All of that is present here in Tiferet. And then we rise from all this infinite number of solitary selves. We rise back to Kether along the path of Saturn. Okay? And the, those solitary selves all merge together and become one awareness, again, of the I in Kether, and then we descend, <clears throat> we realize that we exist as this infinite ocean of essential meaning. Okay? Then we go the reverse. We go from this infinite ocean of essential meaning back to the simplicity of I. And we descend from that simplicity to this infinite complexity, this great explosion 
of solitary selves in Tiferet. Oh, it is so intense. And then we rise from there and we go back to the undifferentiated essential meaning of Hogma. We come to learn uh, how the I is aware of itself in essential meaning and in the solitary selves. How every solitary self is the I experiencing itself. Okay, so from the individual perspective, the individual experience of this gate, we come from that infinite ocean of essential meaning in Hakma and bring down, follow down our own uh, quantity of essential meaning into Tiferet and we become our solitary selves filled with just that quantity of essential meaning and then we rise to the eye and we open up, we let go of that limitation and become the infinite I once again. And then we descend, we, we recognize once again that we exist as that infinite ocean of essential meaning in Hokma. And then we rise back up to Cather and the infinite simplicity of the I and we descend and we fit ourselves. The I fits into this tiny little expression of only part of the essential meaning of the I. And we are a reflection of that infinite I among these infinite number of other reflections of the infinite eye, and then we rise back up to Hokma and merge again with the undifferentiated essential meaning. Okay. <clears throat> That's the personal experience. And from that we learn everything that there is to know about our own personal expression of the I and of essential meaning. How that quantity of essential meaning is ours and only ours. That specific array of essential meanings in that specific ratio that we express as our solitary self is utterly unique. So we understand the nature of self in this process, but we also understand the nature of other and that there is no genuine barrier between self and other. We are all composed of essential meaning and we are all united in Hokma and in Kether. The uh, experience of self and other only arises here in Tiferet. That is just one experience of I, okay? The I must experience itself in contrast, in relation to other. But at the same time, always
always be connected in Hokma and Kether. Okay. So <clears throat> those are the first three gates of Tiferet. Next time we will explore the remaining four gates of Tiferet. Till then. <laughs>